This Ridley Report is brought to you by Libertania.com. So there's two Celts. They've arrived at the Pacific Ocean. It's the end of the 18th century. They're standing on the beach. They're looking at the lovely surf. They're looking out west, and they're going, one brother says to another, Seamus, what are you doing? He says, Rodney, I'm taking a swim. How come, Seamus? Swim. The Constitution's right behind us. The reason why I use the Celt, by the way, is because I believe that Celts are genetically anti-authoritarian. I have a red-headed wife who's in the audience right now. She is genetically anti-authoritarian. I haven't had to do any empirical studies, simply anecdote. <laughs> empires are powerful, aren't they? Right? Do empires dissolve or go away? Did the Roman Empire? 2,214 years, where's the Roman Empire? Dustbin of history. Where's the Mongol Empire? Dustbin of history. The Russian Empire, up until 1917, dissolved. Holy Roman Empire, 400 years, gone. The British Empire turned into a number of isolated rocks around planet Earth in 1946. The Han Empire in China lasted about 400 years. The Byzantine, 1,000 years. The Persian Empire, about 1,000 years. The Umayyad Caliphate, till 1924, from 700. And the Ottoman Empire. I, I just named 10 empires. But every empire has this hubris. They have this sense that for time immemorial, they will exist with the strength and acquisitive power that they were born with and that they progressed with. But we found that again and again, that doesn't happen. Is there anybody here who doubts that America is an empire? America certainly acts in an odd imperial fashion because the British Empire, for all the horrific things it did, for one thing, it tried to make a profit from it, which made some sense. Are we making any profit from the trillions that we spend and I would say from 2001 on in the war on terror, which is, when you think about it, it's the war on a tactic. It's like, ooh, the war on the hasty ambush. The war on evil people. Or maybe the war on fat people with black mustaches who say bad things about us. Same thing. There's no difference. But in this war, we spent trillions of dollars maiming and killing brown people to include men, women, and children. Is this an effective means of having an empire? It may not be an effective means of having an empire in the long run because it can't sustain itself because it's going to run out of money, but it's an empire nonetheless in the way it behaves. Now, does anybody here also think, I've talked about empires that have dissolved, can anybody here think of some countries that no longer exist? I'll name one, Texas. Does Texas exist anymore? It does not. Does Texas, by the way, have ambitions to become an independent republic? There are some folks who do, but I'm here to tell you, having traveled through Texas, what a socialist, collectivist shit pit that place is. You can't carry open in Texas. You have high property taxes in Texas. Yeah, I'd rather take this from yours. You have loony governors in Texas. You have some of those governors who go on to what I call the awful office, O-F-F-A-L, in the Waffle House, which means the war against freedom and liberty, not the Oval Office or the White House, but the awful office in the Waffle House. And what this president did, George Bush, he comes in and he does wage war on the world after 2001. And you know, I said to myself, can it get any worse than this? Obama provided me with a positive answer. Yes, indeed it can. Yes, indeed. Other countries, Tibet, is Tibet a country? It is not a country, it is the Zhejiang Administrat administrative Autonomous Pro Region of China. That's its official title at the United Nations. Does the USSR exist anymore? Very little of it exists. As a matter of fact, I'll talk about that a little bit in the, in the talk a little later on where I'm gonna talk about the potential for peaceful secession because we did have 15 nation states, we'll call them the Stan Brothers that calved themselves off to the southern underbelly of what was once the USSR. Uh, Vermont, was Vermont a country? Yes, it was. From 1777 to 1791. By the way, that year 1791, does that ring a bell for anybody? Is there a meme here? 
that's starting to establish itself, the same time that the Constitution was ratified. And, and my, I want to riff on something Boston said earlier in his brilliant talk where he was talking about Rhode Island, which was called Rogue Island by the Congress. And the reason why they were called Rogue Island is because that was the only state in the Union at the time who took a vote or plebiscite on ratifying the Constitution instead of using a bicameral or, or unicameral house to do so through a ratifying committee. They lost by six to one against the Constitution. 11 to one. I stand corrected. I thought it was six to one. Libertania, The Liberation of Conformia, is a children's book that makes freedom fun. Although, I guess it's already fun. Buy it on Amazon, get it in print, or use it on Kindle. Teaching Without Preaching, The Ideals of Freedom to the Most Important People in Your Life. Libertania.com